Hi, and welcome to Stephen Helwig Talks Tech. Today I'll be walking you through how to design and deploy a resilient web application in Azure. If there's one thing I've learned over my career is that outages happen and you have to design for failure. Leveraging Azure App Service and Azure SQL Database, we can quickly deploy our application in multiple regions and design for some of that resiliency. I'll be walking you through both the architecture so you know what we're deploying and why we're deploying it, and then walking you through deploying a .NET Core application with a SQL backend to multiple regions with automatic failover. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna walk you through what the architecture would look like to set up a resilient web application in Azure using Azure App Service, Azure SQL Database, and another service known as Traffic Manager. Uh, if you look here, we just kind of have an empty diagram and we see that we have two regions. In this case, I'm gonna use West US 2 and East US. Uh, when you're actually in Azure, you want to look at something called region pairs, and I'll put a link to that. Uh, these are not the region pairs in general. Microsoft is going to uh, restore, if there was some kind of widespread outage, they're going to restore one region in a pair first. Uh, but I'm just choosing these two today. Okay, so we're going to go with East US and West US 2. Uh, and on the left side here, you have various services that we're going to be leveraging. We have uh, Azure App Service, Azure SQL Database, Traffic Manager, and this is going to represent our failover listener. This is really the icon for a load balancer, but I'm going to use it to represent our failover listener. And then here is our SQL Server. Okay, let's get into the first part of the architecture. Okay, this is, uh, we're, we're deploying here an active passive uh, web application. And what that means is that we're always going to route the traffic to the primary region. And in this case, our primary region is East US. And so you'll see here, this represents our web traffic users coming into our website. And what Traffic Manager does is it acts as a router for that traffic. It's going to route it to where you want it to go. There are multiple routing options. Uh, you can route based on latency. So if you have somebody coming from California, for instance, their traffic might get routed to the West region versus the East region. But in this case, we're gonna use priority based routing, which means it's gonna route to the location that is the number one priority. And then if that has an issue, then it's gonna route to the location, the region that has the second priority. So if we had you know 10 regions in our architecture, it would just go down the list of priority and find the healthiest one and route the traffic there. In this case, East is priority one. And so if we have a request coming in, Traffic Manager will route it to our web app sitting in East, okay? Our web app is connected to the SQL database. We can make this connection directly, but what we've set up for our SQL environment is known as a failover group listener. And that failover group listener takes the communication from the application and then routes it to the database that's set up as a primary. So it's like a traffic manager for your database. And this comes from the uh, a concept of SQL Server Always On, which has been around for a while, right? And so our web application is, is talking to the failover group listener. And the failover group listener is saying, hey, what's my primary database? Okay, it's the database sitting in East US. I'm gonna route my traffic there. And when the transactions hit that primary database, it's going to geo-replicate those transactions to the secondary database. This secondary database is not writable, but it is readable. So we could have an architecture in which we are reading information from the secondary database. For instance, like our reports, we could use Power BI and our reports could be served out of that secondary database. Or even in our web application, we could serve content out of that secondary database for either faster response time if we are using a latency-based routing method or simply because uh, we want to just offload some of the read requests of the primary database. So this is what a normal active passive environment. Everything's up, everything's working fine, nothing to be concerned about. This is how our traffic will flow. Now we're going to look at what happens if there's an outage to the website. Okay, so here again, you know, we have this little X here to represent, okay, there's an issue here with my website, it's down for some reason. Traffic Manager has detected that. There are health checks that Traffic Manager does on your website and they detect whether or not they're, it's, it's operating normally or not. When Traffic Manager detects an outage and you can set how long it has to try before it says, hey, there's something wrong here, it's going to start routing the traffic to the second uh, website in the priority list. And in this case, it's our website too. 
That website is also set up to speak to our SQL database through the failover group, the failover group listener. And so it's going to once again call the failover group listener and it's going to say, hey, the primary database is good. So I'm going to continue to send my requests and traffic there. You do have in this situation uh, a cross regional uh, communication situation between the web app and the database. And for certain applications, that may not be ideal because, hey, there's too much latency on these requests. But overall, I've found that this architecture actually works quite well. Uh, and, and if you ever are gonna run in an active active mode, you're gonna have this scenario anyway, okay? Uh, and so the database layer will continue on the same way, geo-replicating from the primary to the secondary. Now let's look at a scenario where the website's functioning fine, but now we're having an issue at the database layer. Uh, so our traffic comes into Traffic Manager, everything's healthy on uh, on Priority One, on East US here. Uh, our app service calls to the failover group listener and the failover group listener has initiated a failover, right? It's detected, and there's two things here with Azure SQL. Uh, you can have it automatically fail over, which it means it's it's listening and detecting outages on the database and it's automatically going to initiate a failover or you can force a manual failover and different, you know, use cases may may uh, make you make different choices. Basically, you might say, hey, it's I don't want any automatic failover. Data loss is too much of a concern. And there's some things built into the way that it's done to make sure there is no data loss or very little data loss, I should say. But regardless, you, a failover can be executed either um, automatically or manually, right? So it's detecting there's been a failure. It's failed over to the secondary, uh, which was in West US 2, and it's promoted it to a primary. So now those transactions are coming from East US. They're floating into this primary database here in West US. And then that geo-replication relationship will resume once it detects that the database is back online. Okay, and this is our last architecture. We have an entire region out, right? East US is down. We're not able to reach either our app service or our, or our database. And you'll see now that all of the traffic has uh, moved over to the West US region. So Traffic Manager has done that priority routing. It's failed over to West US on the web side. And our failover group listener on the SQL side has also failed over the database to West US as the primary. And so now all of that automatically, that traffic's now routing through the West. Our users are still up. They're still leveraging the application. Once it's back up in the East, then things will reset themselves. Your database, you can have it fail back over if you wanted to do that, and your traffic manager will start rerouting to priority one. Well, that's been a look at how we would set up our application in Azure, how it's going to function and work, and how the failover will occur. Next, we're gonna dig into taking a web application, deploying it, and creating our app service and SQL database environments, setting up the failover, and testing that failover.